What's up everybody, the poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today, we're gonna to talk about fan curves because I wanna help you get the best possible performance out of your PC case while managing noise, basically. I like my cases extremely quiet while also trying to get the best possible performance. The case that I have here is kind of special and unique right now. There's only a few of them out and about in existence because it's unreleased. It's the Lee & Lee O11 Dynamic Mini Snow Edition. So I have this one, uh, Bitwit has one, hence his shirt and uh, Linus Tech Tips, as well as I think like two people at ASUS. Speaking of ASUS, I have their motherboard here, courtesy of them. It's the B450F Gaming 2, and it's been a pleasure to work with. Uh, so this is my second build inside of this case. This case is a lot of fun to build in because it's extremely customizable, and it's got incredible airflow as well. What I have right now are two 140 millimeter fans by Arctic blowing air into the case, and then three 120 millimeter fans that are high static pressure that are also sucking air from the bottom, blowing it into the case as well, directly at the GPU. Then I have one more as exhaust. And then up top is the Asus 360 uh, AIO, and it's the wide edition. It's been performing quite nicely, especially after managing all of the fan curves for everything going on in the case. This case is now basically whisper quiet on full load. So let me show you what's going on here. The 140 millimeter fan right here is the Bionics by Arctic, and it's actually pretty darn nice. It's got incredibly high airflow. So it is specifically a high airflow fan at 104 CFM, and it goes up to 1800 RPMs. So it will get moderately loud if you push it, but the point of this fan is because it's such a high airflow fan, you don't have to run this at 100% speed. It's generating a lot of airflow at a fairly low RPM. Therefore, it's almost whisper quiet. The 120 millimeter fans are the Arctic P12 PWM PSD fans. These are really nice because they're pressure optimized and they actually go up to 2.2, which is really nice because what I have here is it's kind of a, it's a decent amount of gap, but because it's not as open as say the open back here, I wanted pressure optimized fans. Plus it's blowing air directly at the GPU. So as you see here, it's very directional instead of just blowing air in all kinds of directions. It's very specific. So this is really helpful as well. One specific thing I really like about these fans is the fact that you can daisy chain them. So you can put a bunch of these together, which is what I did in the case, but I don't recommend mixing fans of different sizes because you're gonna want them to do their own specific thing. So I have a bunch of these plugged into one port in the motherboard, and then these plugged into a separate port on the motherboard. The ROG Strix LC360 RGB Wide Edition, it's a mouthful, but it's impressed me. You have a large selection of AIOs out there and a lot of them give similar performance. This one I like because of the low noise that it actually generates. You can get great performance out of this while making sure that this is actually quite quiet. Now, of course you can rev the fans up and you can notice that it's definitely on, but you don't need to with this. This is cooling a Ryzen 9 3900 XT in a way that makes me happy. So I'll get into that in a little bit. As for the wide edition case, some of the I.O. is up top. So you have two USB and a USB-C power button and audio. And then that's it. This thing is very clean, very crisp. And the airflow is really top notch. And because the airflow is so good in this, the RTX 3080 in there just does not struggle at all. And it stays really quiet. Because I'm using the Asus B450F Gaming 2 motherboard, I'm using the included software that's directly from their website to manage my fan curves. So you actually have different options based on the fans you're using. Let's start with the CPU fan. So this is actually what's plugged into the AIO, the three fans here, which then appear as just one nice fan curve. So the way that I devise this is I monitor things in Hardware Info 64. It's a free application you can download, and I'll put a link in the description below. But there's areas here for CPU temperature, GPU temperature, uh, just different areas of the die as well. So CCD1, CCD2. So you can really manage exactly what the temperatures are as well as the speeds for the fans. This fan curve software is very easy to utilize. Now, one of the things I like to do first off is right here it says fan smoothing up and down. So it's a kind of a timer. We all know that processors, they will kind of have their burst moments where it's just a very short period of time of you know having increased temperatures, increased uh, processing power. Overall, you don't need your fans to ramp up in an AIO immediately because 
there's liquid inside of here. And it takes some time, especially in the 360 AIO, for that liquid temperature to actually rise. So as I, let's say here, run Cinebench R20, as an example, the temperature goes up a little bit here, but you'll notice you can't hear the fans. The fans are increasing slightly, but because of this seven second timer I have, it's not gonna jump immediately. It's going to monitor whatever that temperature is and then adjust slowly according to that. And that's still giving me really nice performance on this 12 core, 24 thread processor. So after just one run of Cinebench R20, the maximum temperature was 70 degrees Celsius. So let's run a more thorough run of about 10 minutes. I do like to use Cinebench R23 for longer tests because it's a newer type of benchmark and its default is a 10 minute run. You can adjust the time in Cinebench R20 for 10 minutes, but this is a newer benchmark software. Also in Hardware Info 64, over to the right, I'm gonna reset that timer with all of the uh, settings going back to fresh. So the way I have this fan curve set up is when it's at 30 degrees Celsius for the 3900 XT processor, it's going to be at 20% speed for the fans. And then as the temperature rises, when it's at 80 degrees Celsius, I then have the fans at 40%. And then the maximum 95 degrees Celsius, that's basically hitting the, the max temperature for the CPU, the fans would be at 100%. But during that trip in between the two, uh, the fans are going to be ramping up and prevent it from getting anywhere near that temperature. So let's see how this does. I'm going to reset Hardware Info 64 for a fresh benchmark and start Cinebench R23, which has a uh, default timer for 10 minutes. So as this runs, 12 cores, 24 threads cranking away. You'll see here and we can monitor things with the fan curve here. The fans for the AIO haven't even ramped up yet. And so far the PC is pretty darn quiet. The 360 millimeter AIO by ASUS does use an Asetek pump. And I do keep this pump at 100% speed at all times. It's a very quiet pump. So whether it's at 50% speed or 100% speed, I can't tell the difference audibly. What you see here is the fan curve for the 140 millimeter Arctic fans. I have it set so that when the temperatures are 27 degrees Celsius, they're at 12% speed. When they're at 65 degrees Celsius for the 3900 XT, it's at 40%. And then 100% speed for if the CPU hits 80 degrees Celsius. So it's got a long trek to go from 65C, 40% to 100% at 80 degrees Celsius. I have fan 2 set up as the 120 millimeter Arctic fans as intake as well as the rear exhaust. All four are connected together. And this is what the fan curve looks like right now. So when the temperature for the 3900 XT is at 40 degrees Celsius, the fans fan at 10%. When the temperature gets to 70 C, then the fans spin at 50%. And it takes 85 degrees Celsius for it to get to max speed at 100%. With this design of the fan layout and the speeds, I actually have positive pressure inside of the case. This also helps to prevent excess of dust building up inside of the case. So when dust is just falling in the air, it's going to be inherently blown away from the case. So we are eight minutes in, and right now the maximum temperature has been 71.8 degrees Celsius for the 3900 XT, 12 cores, 24 threads, not too shabby at all. The 3900 XT has a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz, and right now it's hovering around four gigahertz for this entire run of Cinebench R23. No thermal throttling whatsoever, and the temps are good enough for it to sustain four gigahertz for this entire run. The temperatures are actually good enough where it does have a boost clock, and therefore one of the cores has even reached 4.5 gigahertz. Our Cinebench R23 benchmark is finished and we got a score of 17,276. And that's really good. It actually beat out a Threadripper 1950X. Nice. So that's about it. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, the software can make or break your experience. I do recommend just checking with your motherboard manufacturer website and download their specific software. There's third-party software out there as well, but it's all the same. Uh, in the end, you just wanna make sure you know what your temperature is for your CPU 
and then adjust your fan speeds based on that. Give yourself a little bit of you know leeway. I like seven seconds because of this AIO. Water takes a long time to heat up inside of an AIO compared to an air cooler. So you don't need the fans to all, all of a sudden you know ramp up all the time, uh, especially when you're gaming. Games don't press a CPU at 100% load for your entire game experience. It bounces all over the place. So leverage that leeway of having water take time to heat up. So that's a nice benefit of having an AIO, being able to have a nice quiet system while you're getting some great performance. So a big shout out to one, uh, ASUS for the 360 AIO, the white edition, uh, for all these motherboards and I'm churning through. This is just one of many of a stack from ASUS that I'm getting through. Uh, and really just show you guys how to overclock, how to manage fan curves, all this stuff. Uh, definitely a big shout out to Arctic because these fans are really great. I, I love the white look of them. Having a selection of high static pressure fans and high airflow fans really makes a difference to maximize the airflow within your case. And the fact of having them as PWM allows you to just adjust the fan speeds as you need to to get the best possible performance for the least amount of noise. And of course, a huge shout out to HP. This HP Omen uh, 27i monitor is Honestly, it's just one of my favorite monitors I've ever used. It's it's amazing. So check that out. And of course, for them supplying the, uh, the RTX 3080. So this is really a partner build. I'm gonna be doing more of these and I have more coming. So let me know if you guys have questions in the comments below. Hit me up on TikTok, Instagram, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. So peace.